Bien a puncher with a vacuum tainer and the bulldog. The first thing that you need to do whenever you want to take blood from a patient is to make sure that you have the correct patient. Um, it will not help a lot if you need to take blood from Mrs. Prinsloo and then when you get to her, um, she was not a patient in the bed, it was actually Mrs. Cronier and in fact you took blood from Mrs. Cronier. So the first thing you do, you make sure that you have the correct patient with you. Um, make sure that it is on her ID tag, that you have her name, that it corresponds with the name that you have on the form. Then we need the tubes. We, we've got different tubes for different uh, tests that we need to do. And make sure that you have the correct test tubes with you. It will also not help if you want to do a full blood count and you put it in a test tube like this one with a red top because in this tubes it will clot. Then you can't run the test. The next thing that you must remember is that this needles has got a needle on both sides. So there is a sharp point if you look at that in between this there is a needle on that side and then a needle on this side so remember that when you take blood so that you don't insert your fingers inside the bulldog there because it will prick you if you do that okay now what we need to do with Make sure that this is Mrs. Prinsloo that we want to take blood from. We've got our cotton wool balls, we've got plaster, we've got the test tubes, the vacuum tainer, the bulldog. Now we need to clean the area where we want to take the blood. First thing that you do is you want to make sure which vein are you going to use. So you fasten the tunicae after you told her that you're going to, to um, take blood. Now you select a suitable vein. The best way to do that is by palpating the veins because sometimes you cannot see the vein but you can feel it very easily. The best places to do that is here inside the antecubital area of the arm but you can also take blood on the hand, on the feet and in the neck. Um, if you want to take blood in the feet it's a last resort because of a lot of complications that can happen there and it is very painful to take blood um, on the feet. Um, I've selected this vein to do my vena puncture. After you've selected the area, loosen the tunicate. You cannot leave it on and now you get everything ready. Okay. So now I wash my hands. In this case, I'm somewhat going to use the Ibitane and alcohol. Hand cup. And then I put on gloves. I put on gloves because I want to protect myself and I want to protect my patient. So I put on the gloves. And on this side. Okay, now I clean this area. If I want to clean it, I just use cotton wool and hibitane and alcohol. And you do it in a circling movement from the inside to the outside. So you rub it nicely. It's clean. And in the waistband. There's your waistband. Right, now there is my vein. And now afterwards, you don't go and press on every piece of, of um, clean area. You can just wait for it now to air dry. Okay, now it's dry. And you make sure that your tunic is fastened. Let's loosen it for a while. Then I'll show you how you connect your needle. You use the vacuum tainer needle. You open the back side. And then you throw away this piece. 
inside the waist band. Now you collect, connect it. The short side of the needle goes into the bulldog and you just screw it on like that. Now you can open it there and you don't bend your needle. It's no use to bend the needle. Previously we used to bend the needles like this but we don't you do that anymore. There's a hole inside this needle and whenever you bend it then you actually make the size of the needle smaller inside. So you have problems maybe later to get blood out from there. If you want to unscrew your needle again what you do is after you take blood you put it inside your waist bin until it hooks and then you just turn it anti-clockwise and it will loosen and fall in. Right, let's take a new needle. So now again I want to open my needle the back side of it. Let's just make sure. Right, there's a little bit of a piece of paper there and I throw it away. I put the small side with the rubber on inside the bulldog like that. Right, now everything is ready. For me, I get my piece of plaster so that I can uh, get it for the patient afterwards. Let's just see where it is. Tip of it, there it is. Keep it like that. Okay, so now it is clean and I fasten my tunicae. I make sure that my tubes are within reach. Now I need to stabilize the vein. The reason is if I just leave it like that and I put in the needle then maybe the, the vein will move and I will not get any blood out of there. The other thing that you must remember is whenever you take blood there is a sharp edge and then um, the bevel of this needle needs to show upwards otherwise it is very painful for the patient when you insert your needle. Okay so now I stabilize my vein by just pulling gently backwards and then I insert it and you can feel when you're going through your vein. The moment that you are inside the vein you um, just insert your tubes. If you see that you don't get blood when you insert it immediately then you can take it out a little bit and go in again or you can um, push it in a little bit deeper because sometimes what happens is that the vein uh, when you when you put it in you go straight through the vein so then you just need to pull back a little bit or it can be that you have your bevel just against the wall of the, um, the vein and then you will also struggle to get any blood okay so now put it in and I insert my tube. Okay, if you see that you don't get blood, you go back a little bit and then you just go in again. If you still see no blood, then you take out this tube because maybe the vacuum is not there anymore and you put in a new one where there may be a better vacuum than in the first one. As you can see there was a little bit of blood there so maybe it can be from going in too deep or too shallow in this case. Let's see where is the blood. Alright, as you can see there is the blood coming out of your vein. You wait until it fills up completely. It will store by itself because it's got a vacuum inside. Now you take out your vacuum tube. You tilt it a few times. If you want to put in another one, you put in another one. Just like that, by still stabilizing your whole system. Ok, 
okay then you wait for that one to fill and look on the PowerPoint because there are a specific order in which you need to take the um, plots now before you take out the needle you first need to loosen your tunicate then you take your piece of cotton wool just press it down there and take out the needle immediately after you've taken out your needle you discard the needle and you put it in your um, sharp spin if you don't have a sharp spin if you are at a place where there is no sharp spins then what you need to do is before you insert the needle inside the patient you put your cap of the needle on a place like the bedside or wherever you're going to take it where it will be easy for you to access it with one hand because when you take it out you need to recap the needle then you never leave this open needle on the bed or on a table like that near because the next moment somebody will come in and you put his hand on there and then he's got a needle stick injury so how to recap a needle you take one hand you just put it inside the cap like that and you lift it up okay again you put your cap there you take your needle out here, you recap immediately. You put it inside with one hand, lift it up. Now it is closed. Now you can take it off. But remember, if you have a system like this, there is still a needle there. So until you get to your sharps bin, you don't take off the bulldog from the vacutainer needle. You keep it like this. Otherwise, somebody will come and pick himself with the other end of the needle. Okay, so that is with the needle. Now the patient. You have asked the patient to just press down on your piece of cotton wool. You don't ask him to bend his arm like this because it will increase the chances of bruising. So you just ask him to press down there and then you fasten that with a piece of plaster and while you are at the patient you make sure that you label your tubes and you write on here the name of the person the initials of the person the surname the ID number of the person or the hospital number of the person your own signature as to you were the one taking the blood the date that you do that and the time and also if you know what you're going to do and which tube is which one you can also write on what test you want to do on this um, tube so that you can also put it and then you send it to the lab immediately okay thank you